Coach, it's Jason Wolf with the Buffalo News. Congratulations on the win. Thanks, Jason. Uh, I was curious, I uh, wanted to try to understand the thought process, passing as much as you guys did in the first half, given the, the conditions with the wind in particular. And, uh, you know, what, if anything, you guys talked about at halftime, because it seemed like you did get the running game uh, established a little bit on the first drive of the second half, which you guys took down the field for a touchdown. Yeah, I thought there was good adjustments made by the coaches. First half, it got away from us a little bit. And, and uh, you know, so we thought we had some plays there and we didn't execute well enough. And, and uh, the, you know, the, the, we get out of bounds uh, way too much right there. We've seen Allen take over a game, you know, with his arm. Uh, recall Seattle earlier this season. W was that sort of what you planned going into this game, given what the Ravens were able to do last week against Derrick Henry, or or did you expect to run the ball a little bit more than you guys did? Yeah, I, th I would, you know, I think overall we did expect to run the ball a little more than we did. And I think, like I said, it just got away from us. But they are a good stout front. You know, they, they're they big, strong, long up front, you know, and, and – uh, and so I thought we did, to your point, come out in the second half and, and, uh, and establish some, some rhythm there. What do you do uh, tomorrow? Sit around and just watch this thing? It'll feel good to just uh, try and get some sleep and, and relax a little bit. We're going to go in and, and uh, make sure we put this, uh, learn from this film and, and then uh, take some time as well just to maybe sit back and watch it on TV like everybody else. Cool. Thank you, Coach. Congrats again. All right. Sure. Thanks, Jason. You don't sleep, do you? <laughs> sometimes. There's sometimes. <laughs> um, congrats on the win. I guess just, you know, Dion said it's a party in there. Um, you know, the emotions are still uh, flying high. I guess just from your perspective, what are the emotions like of uh, making it to the AFC championship game? Yeah, just awesome. It's, you know, we, we came here with a, with a vision and, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, seeing it, um, move forward, I guess is the best way to say it. You know, we're not there yet, but move forward in the right direction is um, is good to see and, and uh, feels good. And what a great environment. I know, uh, you know, again, all, all of our fans couldn't be in the building, but, um, you know, it was loud again for two weeks straight. And um, I thought it was a typical Western New York night here with the wind and snow flurries on my way over to the stadium. Uh, it looked like uh, I thought it was going to be a repeat of the Colts game uh, a few years ago because it was coming down. And, and, uh, and so uh, just, just great experience, great atmosphere. Uh, congrats to all the Bills fans out there. How much of a game changing play was Taron Johnson's pick six? Huge, man. That was huge. He made it, you know, similar play against Ben and, and Steelers. Uh, I think that was before half. This one was at the end of the third quarter, I believe. And that was a huge play and a big stop for our defense. Uh, I thought Leslie Frazier and our defensive staff and the players just executed at a high level, and, and that play was huge in terms of momentum. I think we were up uh, – were we up seven? Ten, three. Ten, we were 10-3, up seven at that point, so it was a huge play for us. Awesome. Thanks, John. Congrats again. Thanks, Heather. Hey, Coach. Congrats on the win. Um, just with respect to the first half, when, you're, when your passing game was having trouble, like really getting into a groove or a rhythm, how much – do you see the value of, of what Smoke and Stefan were able to do to at least help you guys move the sticks, stay on the field, and, and stay on schedule? I know a lot of those drives didn't finish with points, but at least they kept you on the field, just the effort of those two guys. Yeah, that was huge, uh, their effort. I mean, they just they stuck with it. Really, our, our overall offense as a whole, I thought, stuck with it. They kept playing. That's a very good defense, so give them some credit as well here. And, um, you know, we did possess the ball, which was good and kept the ball out of their hands at times. And, um, and so, you know, I, I thought that, um, getting into a rhythm in the second half was, was important for us. And, um, and so, you know, we just kept fighting. We kept, we kept playing and that's what you got to do in these games. Thanks coach. Sure. Hey, Sean, Matt Bovee here. Uh, I'm just a little bit more on the Taron Johnson play. I feel like you're going to get asked about this a lot. So he tells us that he makes the interception. He thinks about kneeling down, but then he looks up and he sees some green grass. For you on the sideline, what are you thinking? Because I bet you probably had that same initial reaction when he made the, the interception. Yeah, no, I listen, I trust, I trust my players. Um, yeah. And I really wasn't thinking stay in, but, you know, I could see initially where he had a little bit of traffic. 
um, you know, in front of them or, or around them, I guess it's probably the best way to say, because I think it was on the side or behind them slightly, but, uh, you know, Leslie Frazier, the defensive staff, they, they emphasize that all the time in terms of scoring on defense. And, and, uh, and now we've been able to do it twice, I think this year, and three times, I think Jerry did it at Denver as well. So uh, just big, big, big time play for us. You know, our red zone defense the last couple of weeks is, is, has been improving, which is good to see. Do you let yourself get excited on the sideline when a play like that happens? Because I know you're pretty even keel. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, those are big plays, hard, hard to come by. And um, I think I first made sure no, the, the official wasn't going to run into anyone on our sideline. So I wanted to make sure the sideline was clear because uh, when it changes, so the, uh, those plays go the other way so fast, sometimes you get some costly penalties right there. So I think that was my first, uh, first instinct, honestly. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate you. Yeah, sure. Coach Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports 1080. Congrats on the win today. Thanks, Mookie. Hey, um, coming out of that second half, um, two big third down conversions. And after that, it was all motor singletary. Care to talk about how important was it to get him going in that second half, Coach? Yeah, you know, the coaches did a great job at halftime making adjustments. And, and we needed to get into a rhythm in after half. And we did that. I thought that that was a big drive for us. They had scored before half, gotten three. Uh, and so, you know, if we don't score, they get the ball back, I'm saying after half, then they, they have a chance to double dip. Um, and so, you know, I think it was 3-3 three, three at that point. So that was a big drive for us. Great job by our offense. Absolutely. Now you got Levi Wallace, big sacks. You got Matt Milano, Matt Milano flying everywhere. And Jerry Hughes is just a sack machine. Just care to talk about how impressed were you in uh, coaches Frazier's uh, defense today? Yeah, they did a phenomenal job. It was a great plan, uh, well-executed plan. The way they practiced during the week was well mapped, was very mapped out and uh, and intentional. And I thought the players showed that in the way that they played tonight. Absolutely, Coach. Congrats. Thanks. Hey, Sean. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. You. If uh, Taryn's play was the biggest play, the second biggest play is probably Lamar Jackson's injury. How did the game change after that? How did you? Change how you were playing them, or did you feel any emotion sucked out of them? No, not really. Um, I honestly didn't. I mean, the next quarterback is similar, um, just not well, as well known as Lamar. I would just say, you know, he hasn't played as much, but he's very mobile. Thought he did a good job, honestly, getting the ball uh, and moving their team down the field. So maybe lacks some experience. I don't know his full resume, quite honestly, but we, we had respect for him as well, and and uh, we made the necessary stops from where we needed to make. Okay. Hey, Sean, uh, congratulations on, on the win. Um, you know, going into this week, uh, you know, obviously all the talk was about Lamar Jackson and, you know, the success you guys had against him last year and the, the challenge that it presented this year. I mean, what would you say about the job that Leslie Frazier did, not only preparing the team, but helping to come up with a game plan and how he got that, that side of the ball ready to play? Yeah, just a phenomenal job. That's a tough offensive stop, as you guys heard me say during the week. They're unique in what they do as it relates to the NFL. And I think Greg Roman does a really good job and, um, you know, give credit where credit is due. Our, our uh, Leslie Frazier led a great defensive performance tonight. And uh, I thought the defensive staff had good communication during the week, which is important in terms of their collaboration. And, and then uh, and the players had a, had a really good week of practice. They were focused and, and uh, they played 111 style football, which is what you got to do. Listen, I know that there, you know, there's a lot of unselfish guys in this league. But you look at a guy like Taron Johnson and a guy like Trent Murphy that have had their obstacles this season, to have them step up in this in this big way and and take maybe the setbacks this season the way that they have and respond. I mean, how much pride does that bring you? And also, what does it say about the people that you have in the building here? Yeah, as I said before, this is a people people oriented business, and uh, the X's and O's are certainly important. But uh, you got to have the right people because, to your point. Listen, it hasn't been easy the whole year for for a guy like Taron. He's he's persevered and and Trent the same way. And there's there's many others. I mean, we've got other guys that uh, you know want to be out there playing and they're not out there playing or they're not playing as much. And that's where you just got to keep it about the team. And but it takes special people to do that because it's certainly not easy. Thanks, Sean. Yes. Good evening, uh, Coach George Reddy, Challenger Challenger Community News. Uh, congratulations on the win tonight. Thank you, sir. What, what do you think was it that the defense really, they really took care of all the angles and everything. It seemed like, and they played a full complete game. Do you feel this was the best 
uh, game of the season so far for your defensive unit overall? Well, it was certainly up there. I mean, to, to put it, to hold a team in the playoffs in the divisional round of three points is, is tough to do, especially in offense with the weapons that they have, Lamar Jackson and so on and so forth. So just a, just a really gutty, uh, I thought, uh, performance by them and, and uh, they were disciplined. We knew that we had to be disciplined. Those guys played disciplined and they, and they played, uh, they played hard throughout the entire game. And it was, the, it looked like the, the weather was a factor. You guys it looked like that wind was causing a lot of chaos with the, uh, not only the kicking game, but, uh, passes down, down the field, especially going toward the, uh, the players tunnel. Was yeah. Yeah. It was tough. I mean, we Josh tried to take a couple of shots down there and it was, it, it wasn't a steady wind. It was, uh, it was inconsistent, but it was inconsistently gusting. And so it made it hard to judge, you know, how to, how to spin the ball out there. And, and so, uh, I think we benefited from, from that one time, but, uh, we missed a couple uh, shots early in the game because of it. So, you know, it was, it was hard. All right. Well, thank you very much and good luck next week. All right. Thank you, sir. Hey, Sean, Jared Bell here. How you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, oh, I pretty got you. good. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, when when you think about that, take this. When you think about your defensive plan, how critical was it for you to seal the perimeter? Lamar has hurt so many teams this year with his ability to get outside of the pocket for runs and and even passing, but you collapsed the pocket on him uh, consistently tonight. How key was that to the defensive plan? Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta do. I mean, it takes all eleven guys to to be able to um, have a chance to contain Lamar. He's a special player, um, and then he's not the only player that they have that's really good. I mean, Hollywood Brown and Andrews, and then the backs, the stable of running backs that they have is you can't just ignore those guys, you know. Uh, and so I thought again, it was a good team, good team effort on defense and uh, and fun to watch. But but the whole idea of keeping him contained and allowing your, your pressure did did that factor into it? I mean, does that play hand in hand when you yeah, see you got the it. perimeter? We wanted to to make sure we knew where he was. I mean, as you saw, there's a third down and I don't know, fifteen maybe he scrambled for a first down right up the middle. Um, I mean, there's not a whole lot of quarterbacks in the league that can scramble on third and fifteen right up the middle for a first down. Um, so. Uh, he's a special player. All right, thanks a lot. Sure.